Exporting for Android in Widow has always been a complete mess, even though there is a documentation, because following text tutorials are always boring and ineffective. Today I will show you the step by step that you have to follow in order to build your game to your phone in the easiest way possible. Now, let's start. So the first thing that you really have to know about how this process exactly works is that you have to go to the Widow docs and here go to the section exporting for Android, okay? Because here this information may change a little bit if you're watching this video a couple of weeks or months after the video is uploaded. But the process is always kind of similar. What may change, for example, here's that the exact versions that you have to install. So this is just for you to uh, know, okay? So as you can see, the first step is to uh, install uh, OpenGDK. So let's just click over here. And here, well, you have all the versions, but it's actually a little bit difficult to... Uh, find the exact version that you have to download because well as you can see depending on your operating system you will have to download a specific version so on the operating system let's down uh, select here uh, windows in my case and here my windows uh, is uh, x64 um and here i will download the gdk and i will download the version of uh, msi okay so here just uh, download it once it is done, let's just open this file, click next, next, and install, and wait a couple of seconds. And once you have this pop-up that everything is okay, just click finish. Let's go to the next step that is downloading the Android SDK. So we will follow this link to download Android Studio. And let's wait a couple of seconds. Now here, let's uh, click here, download and accept here all the all the terms and download the game save and wait a couple of seconds when the download is complete double click the file and here just click next next here uh, you can change where under studio will be installed basically just click next 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 until you can successfully install the program click here next again finish and it will automatically open the android studio that uh, we have just installed if it is the first time that you open android studio uh, i probably would tell you that you will have to download some sdk or some other files that here in my recording didn't appear uh but it's the exact same process just click next 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 install accept all the terms and well finally you will reach uh, some similar window to this so basically we go to more actions sdk manager and first of all you have to copy this android sdk location because we will use it in a second and here comes one of the most important steps uh that more most people fail uh, so that so uh, as a result then they don't can't really export anything so what you have to make sure here is to, that you're installing the exact same versions that they are telling you in the documentation so for example android sdk platform tools version 3005 or later so let's go to platform tools and here uh 3005 or later uh so it was platform tools so let's look here platform tools and also you have to make sure that you have here enable hide obsolete packages and uh, you are showing package details so that you can actually download specific versions of this so basically, Android SDK Platform Tools, uh, this is the latest version, so it will work because it told me here version this one or later. Uh, then I have SDK Build Tools version 33. So here I have them. So here I have installed the version that they told me, this version over here. And also, uh, something that may happen, I don't know why, by this version tends to fail. Basically, when you are building in Godot with this version, there may be happening some error, okay? So that's why I literally downloaded every version to make sure that Godot would be able to build because if Godot tries to build with, for example, this version over here and this version fails and you have installed other version of the uh, build tools, it will try to build the game with just other version that you have and that may, may work. Uh, but on the other hand, if you only have one version installed and that version somehow fails and you have no other version installed, the building will fail and you your game won't work so that's why in my case my build tools i have downloaded literally every version 
So let's go to the other uh, points here. Uh, SDK platform 33. So here you will enable this other version over here. And command line tools, the latest. So let's look for command line tools here, latest. So again, make sure that you're selecting that version. Uh, CMake version 3.10. So here, let's open this up. This version over here. NTK version, this version over here. So let's look here, NTK, and this is the exact version that they are asking me. Okay, check here the numbers that are exactly the same ones. And once you have that, just click uh, apply and then OK. And you will go through again a lot of installation processes. Again, just click next, next, next and wait a couple of seconds. OK, now you will need to create a debug key store. OK, so you will copy this line over here and in your files, in any location that you want, you will just create this debug key store. So, for example, I will just create it on my D drive. So I will uh, right click open in terminal, paste this code, wait a couple of seconds, and as you can see, there it is, okay? So, as you can see here, I have my file, debug.keystore. Again, make sure to remember where you have saved your keystore, uh, and make sure that it's also a safe location, meaning that this file has to remain intact. Basically, you can delete it or move it, because if not, all the process will break down. Uh, so make sure that you're saving it in a safe location, okay? And now the last step that you have to follow is to set up some things in GoodOut. So uh, let's open right away GoodOut. And here we'll go to Editor, Editor Settings. Let's scroll down a little bit until we find here the Export section, Android. And here you have to write your Android SDK path. Basically, this path was the one that we had here on the SDK manager, Android SDK location. Okay, and there we also have the debug key store that we have just created. I already created a debug key store like a long time ago and I saved it on my D drive in a specific folder. But I could even use the one that I created like a second ago with you that was on my D drive. As you can see, I have it here, debug key store. It will work exactly the same. And now having this, we can close our editor settings, go to project, export. We will add a new preset of Android. And as you can see, we will have some things. First of all, we'll have to click here, fix import, because this will just um, change some settings in our project settings that will allow us to actually build for Android. And as you can see, we have to provide a valid package name here. So I'm not going to go through deep explanations about how package package names work. So I will just erase this symbol over here. And as you can see, every warning and error will disappear and I will be ready to export the project. However, before doing that, let me quickly create something on the game because if not, it's going to be completely empty. I'm going to create a control node, also a label that will say just here, subscribe. OK, let me center it and I will also do it much bigger like this. OK. I will save the scene, select it as my current scene. So this is the only thing that I will have. And also let me set up here mode to canvas items and the aspect to keep so that I can make sure that this will actually look good on my phone. And finally, also let's set up here the orientation to landscape. So that's okay. So once you have this completely done and you have no warnings, you have to actually build your project and there are two ways of doing this. So you can literally just click here, export projects and save it wherever you want. This will work. So for example, let's try it out. Let's wait a couple of seconds. And well, if you have no warnings, it means that everything is fine. And let me explain you here the thing with the build tools that I was telling you. Version of build tools that matches target SDK failed to execute. So Basically, it's going to be using other versions. So as you can see, here's version 28.0.0. But here in the documentation, it told us that uh, it should be using this version over here. Okay, I think that it was platform tools over here. Yeah, build tools was. And the build tools should be version 33. And as you can see, it failed to use, to execute. So it's using much older version. I don't know why, but at least this is working. So you sh you will have your uh, your APK for example here let's check again uh, I have it on my uh, on my root folder of my project so if I go to this location let me just copy over here and paste it well I don't know why that opened but 
let me go manually to that location. So here I am, and as you can see, I do have here my APK that I could then send to my uh, own phone by we transfer email, drive, or whatever. I could just upload it here, and this would generate me a link. However, there's a much simpler way to actually do this. And basically, you can just USB debug it. So basically, to USB debug it, let me show you. So first of all, you have to enable some uh, settings in your phone. Basically, in your developer options, uh, you should have here enabled here USB debugging, this option over here, and also install via USB. And how you enable this may really change depending on your specific operating system. So you can just here uh, in Google look for uh, how to turn on developer options and the model of your phone. In my case, it's a Redmi phone. So here, as you can see, here it tells me to go to settings, I go to about phone, etc. So basically, I'm gonna do it right here with you if you have any questions. So in most cases, you will just have to go to about your phone or or something like that. So let me look at that option that is here at the top. And here, if I press in Android version, okay, a lot of times. Well, no, here it wasn't. Sorry, here in OS version. And I click here, uh, here it tells me, uh, no need, you are already a developer. So then here, if I go to additional settings, I, I do have access to the developer options. So as long as you are able to enable USB debugging and install via USB, it will work. So having your phone connected via USB, you can now click here on remote debug, click on your device, wait a couple of seconds. Okay, and this deals runs, okay. So now here on my phone, as you can see, I have this option over here. So I will just click install. And here it will go through some security scans and some other stuff. So again, just click next, next, next. And it, it will end up installing. And also here I am on my mobile phone, as you can see. And I do already have my game. So every time you make a change to your project, you actually just click here and build again. You will realize that if I disconnect my, my phone, okay, this option will automatically turn off. But if I connect my phone again using the USB cable, okay, let's give it just a second. This will uh, turn on also automatically. So it's quite a, an interesting feature to use. So yeah, basically with this, you will be able to build your own games to your mobile phone. So if it was helpful, please consider subscribing, liking, and commenting the video. And see you in the next one. Bye-bye.